Welcome to Thoughts on the Market. I'm Mike Wilson, Chief Investment Officer and Chief U.S. Equity Strategist for Morgan Stanley. Along with my colleagues bringing you a variety of perspectives, I'll be talking about the latest trends in the financial marketplace. It's Monday, April 27th at 10 a.m. Eastern, so let's get after it. Everything goes in cycles, and the U.S. economy is no exception. With the prior economic expansion lasting over 10 years, some market pundits were making the claim in January that the business cycle had been repealed, or at least muted. We now find ourselves in the midst of the steepest recession on record. Most will blame this recession exclusively on the coronavirus, even naming it the COVID-19 recession. However, the virus was just a trigger for a recession that was already approaching, thanks to the excesses that had been building for years. In other words, recessions don't appear out of nowhere. The conditions for one must already be in place. Much like business cycles inevitably ebb and flow, the excesses tend to alternate between the consumer and corporate segments of the economy. Last cycle's excesses were centered on the corporate rather than the consumer sector, with corporate debt reaching all-time highs thanks to financial repression and below market interest rates. In an era of secular stagnation, companies were happy to lever up in an effort to generate better earnings growth. Consumers, on the other hand, were less willing to overborrow again given their disastrous experience in the prior cycle. Instead, consumers delevered in the last economic expansion, choosing to pay down debt rather than borrow more. What this means is that consumers may be in a better position to recover from this recession than they were after the Great Recession. Of course, the nature of this recession is centered on the health crisis, and part of the response has been to completely shut down the economy, which may disproportionately hurt the consumer. And that may lead to a faster reopening of the economy than many thought possible. Such an outcome is bullish for stocks and bearish for bonds if it happens, particularly when one considers the massive fiscal stimulus enacted that is directed right at the consumer. Over the weekend, many states began to roll out their reopening plans. Even New York, the epicenter of the crisis in the U.S., suggested it may allow construction and manufacturing sectors to get back to work as early as May 15th. Whether this reopening proves to be premature remains to be seen. What this means for your portfolio is that stay-at-home winners may no longer be the place to be. Instead, back-to-work beneficiaries may be more underappreciated at this point. I would suggest looking at consumer discretionary and other early cycle stocks that benefit the most from an economic recovery. More specifically, consider areas levered to housing-related, restaurants, branded apparel, banks, and materials and industrial stocks that will benefit from greater infrastructure spending we expect going forward. Finally, small and mid-sized company stocks tend to do better than larger ones as a new expansion begins. The good news in this regard is that earnings expectations have come down more for these out-of-favor areas. As we go through what is likely to be a very disappointing first-quarter earnings season for most companies, there is less room for disappointment in such areas. Indeed, that is what we are seeing so far with some of the biggest earnings misses leading to positive stock reactions. The bottom line, I remain bullish on the recovery from what will be the steepest recession on record. I continue to recommend you buy dips and focus on the past cycle's underperformers for outsized performance going forward. Thanks for listening. For more video from Morgan Stanley, please subscribe here to our YouTube channel, or you can subscribe to Thoughts on the Market directly on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast platform. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or a solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you.